motivations are unbelievably interesting. I mean, it, I, I find, I've been working on this for a few years, and I just find the topic still so amazingly engaging and, and interesting. So I want to tell you about that. The science is really surprising. The science is a little bit freaky, okay? It, we are not as endlessly manipulable and as predictable as you would think. There's a whole set of unbelievably interesting studies. I want to give you two that call into question this idea that if you reward something, you get more of the behavior you want. If you punish something, you get less of it. So let's talk, let's go from London to the mean streets of Cambridge, Massachusetts, in the northeastern part of the United States. And let's talk about a study done at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Here's what they did. They took a whole group of students and they gave them a set of challenges. Things like um, memorizing strings of digits, uh, solving word puzzles, other kinds of spatial puzzles, even physical tasks like throwing a ball through a hoop. Okay, they gave them these challenges and they said to incentivize their performance, they gave them three levels of rewards. Okay? So if you did pretty well, you got a small monetary reward. If you did medium well, you got a medium monetary reward. And if you did really well, if you were one of the top performers, you got a large cash prize. Okay? We've seen this movie before. This is essentially a typical motivation scheme within organizations, right? We reward the very top performers. We ignore the low performers and uh, the other folks kind of in the middle. Okay, get a little bit. So what happens? They do the test. They have these incentives. Here's what they found out. One, as long as the task involved only mechanical skill, bonuses worked as they would be expected. The higher the pay, the better the performance. Okay, that makes sense. But here's what happens. But once the task called for even rudimentary cognitive skill, a larger reward led to poorer performance. Now this is strange, right? A larger reward led to poorer performance? How can that possibly be? Now what's interesting about this is that these folks here who, who, who did this are all economists, at, at, two at MIT, one at the University of Chicago, one at Carnegie Mellon, okay? The top tier of the economics profession. And they're reaching this conclusion that seems contrary to what a lot of us learned in economics, which is, which is that the higher the reward, the better the performance. And they're saying that once you get above rudimentary cognitive skill, it's the other way around. Which seems like this kind of, the idea that these rewards don't work that way, seems vaguely left-wing and socialist, doesn't it? It's kind of this kind of weird socialist conspiracy. For those of you who have those conspiracy theories, I want to point out the, so, the notoriously left-wing socialist group that financed the research, the Federal Reserve Bank. So this is the mainstream of the mainstream coming to a conclusion that's quite surprising. It seems to defy the laws of behavioral physics. So this is strange. It's strange finding. So what do they do? They say, Let's, this, is, this is freaky. Let's go test it somewhere else. Maybe that $50 or $60 prize isn't sufficiently motivating for an MIT student, right? So let's go to a place where $50 is actually more significant relatively. Right? So let's take the experiment, we're gonna to go to Madurai, India, rural India, where $50, $60, whatever the number was, is actually a significant sum of money. So they replicated the experiment in India roughly as follows. Small rewards, the equivalent of two weeks salary, um, I mean, sorry, small performance, low performance, two weeks salary, medium performance, about a month's salary, um, High performance by two months' salary. Okay, so those are real good incentives. Okay, so you're going to get a different result here. Well, what happened though was that the people offered the medium reward did no better than the people offered the small reward. But this time around, the people offered the top reward, they did worst of all. Higher incentives led to worse performance. What's interesting about this is that it actually isn't all that anomalous. This has been replicated over and over and over again by psychologists, by um, some extent by sociologists. Uh, and by economists, over and over and over again. For simple, straightforward tasks, those kinds of incentives, if you do this, then you get that, they're great. For tasks that are algorithmic, set of rules where you have to just follow along and get a right answer, if then, rewards, carrots and sticks, outstanding. But when the task gets more complicated, when it requires some conceptual creative thinking, those kinds of motivators demonstrably don't work. Fact, money is a motivator um, at work, but in a slightly strange way. If you don't pay people enough, they won't be motivated. What's curious about, there's another paradox here, which is that the best use of money as a motivator is to pay people enough to take the issue of money off the table. Pay people enough so that they're not thinking about money and they're thinking about the work. Now, once you do that, it turns out there are three factors that the science shows lead to better performance, um, not to mention personal satisfaction. 
Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Autonomy is our desire to be self-directed, to direct our own lives. Now, in many ways, traditional notions of management run afoul of that. Management is great if you want compliance, but if you want engagement, which is what we want in the workforce today as people are doing more complicated, sophisticated things, self-direction is better. Let me give you some examples of this, of almost radical forms of self-direction in the workplace that lead to good results. Let's start with this company right here, Atlassian, an Australian company. It's a software company, and they do something really cool. Once a quarter, on a Thursday afternoon, they say to their developers, for the next 24 hours, you can work on anything you want. You can work on it the way you want. You can work on it with whomever you want. All we ask is that you show the results to the company at the end of those 24 hours in this fun kind of meeting, not a star chamber session, but this fun meeting with beer and cake and fun and other things like that. It turns out that that one day of pure, undiluted autonomy has led to a whole array of fixes for existing software, a whole array of ideas for new products that otherwise have never emerged. One day. Now, this is not an if-then incentive. This is not the sort of thing that I would have done three years ago before I knew this research. I would have said, you want people to be creative and innovative? Give them a freaking innovation bonus. If you can do something cool, I'll give you $2,500. They're not doing this at all. They're essentially saying, you probably want to do something interesting. Let me just get out of your way. One day of autonomy produces things that never emerged. Now, let's talk about mastery. Mastery is our urge to get better at stuff. We like to get better at stuff. This is why people play musical instruments on the weekend. You have all these people who are acting in ways that seem irrational economically. They play musical instruments on weekends. Why? It's not going to get them a mate. It's not going to make them any money. Why are they doing it? Because it's fun. Because you get better at it, and that's satisfying. Go back in time a little bit. Imagine, I imagine this if I went to my first economics professor, a woman named Mary Alice Shulman. And I went to her in 1983 and said, Professor Shulman, can I talk to you after class for a moment? Yeah. Just, I got this inkling. I got this idea for a business model. I just want to run it past you. Here's how it would work. You get a bunch of people around the world who are doing highly skilled work, but they're willing to do it for free and volunteer their time, 20, sometimes 30 hours a week. Okay, she's looking at you somewhat skeptically there. Oh, but I'm, but I'm not done. And then what they create, they give it away rather than sell it. It's going to be huge. I mean, she, would have, she truly would have thought I was insane. Okay, it seemed to fly in the face of so many things. But what do you have? You have Linux powering one out of four corporate servers in Fortune 500 companies, Apache powering uh, more than the majority of web servers. Uh, Wikipedia. What's going on? Why are, why are people doing this? Why are, they, why are these people, many of whom are technically sophisticated, highly skilled people who have jobs? Okay? They have jobs. They're working at jobs for pay, doing challenging, doing sophisticated techno technological work. And yet, during their limited discretionary time, they do equally, if not more, technically sophisticated work, not for their employer, but for someone else for free. That's a strange economic behavior. Economists who look into it, why are they doing this? It's overwhelmingly clear. Challenge and mastery, along with making a contribution. That's it. What you see more and more is a rise of what you might call the purpose motive, is that more and more organizations want to have some kind of transcendent purpose, partly because it makes coming to work better, partly because that's the way to get better talent. Um, and what we're seeing now is, in some ways, when the profit motive becomes unmoored from the purpose motive, uh, bad things happen. Bad things ethically sometimes, but also bad things just like not good stuff, like crappy products, like lame services, like uninspiring places to work. That when the profit motive is, is, is paramount, or when it becomes completely unhitched from the purpose motive, it just, people don't do great things. More and more organizations are, are realizing this and sort of disturbing the categories between what's profit and what's, and what's purpose. And, and I think that, that actually heralds something interesting. And I think that the companies that organizations that are flourishing, whether they're profit, for profit, or somewhere in between, are, are, are animated by this purpose. But let me give you a couple of examples. Here's the founder of Skype. He says, our goal is to be disruptive, but in the cause of making the world a better place. Pretty good purpose. Here's Steve Jobs. I want to put a ding in the universe, all right? That's the kind of thing that might get you up in the morning ra racing to go to work. So I think that, um, that we are purpose maximizers, not only profit maximizers. I think the science shows that we care about mastery very, very deeply. 
Uh, and the science shows that we want to be self-directed. And I think that the big takeaway here is that if we start treating people like people and not assuming that they're simply horses, you know, slower, smaller, better smelling horses, uh, if we get past this kind of ideology of carrots and sticks and look at the science, um, I think we can actually build organizations and work lives that make us better off, but I also think they have the promise to make our world just a little bit better. Comments, reflections. So, what are the three uh, purpose? Mastery, autonomy, and the three. No? So, what's your reaction on this? Because this one has something to do with the catechetical ministry. But he's talking about the purpose, no? Yung higher than the. Uh -oh. Yung transcendental, di ba? Yung higher than. Because it's the purpose. That's where you talk about what's the purpose. No, once you are able, lahat ba nakapil up sa box ng purpose? Parang hindi ata. <laughs> okay, so any comment, any realization on this? Actually, it's available in the YouTube. You audit RSA, anime, and then motivation. So you can access this. Uh, RSA, what is the link? Uh, I we're talking about people management as a science based on research. It's not a matter of art, but there's really a basis for what we're talking about in terms of managing people as far as even in this case building your motivation. So any reflection on this? Based on the kind of work that you are doing vis-a-vis -vis what you have seen in the video? <coughs> Um, if, if what the what if the sorry if what was if it was if the video said was true then definitely the directors and the coordinators here the one primary motivation we will have is purpose. Okay. So you need to uh, to emphasize that no or you need to inculcate that purpose component among the workers in the vineyard. That's what I'm talking about because it's not reward. We do not have that no. But, but what was said there, assuming that you, but when you take away the reward side, no meaning, you pay them anti so they don't need to worry about that anymore. So you now harp on the three, the purpose, autonomy. mastery, and autonomy. That's what you need to focus on. The other condition that the pay side has been addressed, that's what I'm talking about. So that is not part of the equation anymore. Because that's where we are. That's why I wanted to show you this one. This is based on a study, uh, based on people's behavior. And yet it came out that it's not money, right? But it is really the purpose in what you do that will motivate people to work. And this is where we are right now. Because we were talking about this, oh, no, not so difficult. And yet what we need, but based on this study, it is not money that will make really people work, but it's purpose, autonomy, and master. Any other uh, reflection, reaction? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I think this is, uh, this is what is happening in our, uh, most of our particular dioceses, because we have a lot of volunteer categories. So they are working for free, they are uh, teaching for free, but they are so they are so passionate, they are so committed with being a catechist because they find purpose, they find meaning in what they are doing. So you love, you love for long as they do not fail. Uh, no. So <laughs> what I'm saying is to capitalize on that because we cannot really afford as a, as as the church really to provide others that can provide monetarily. Right? But what I'm saying is you need to focus on something that will make them stay. That's why. That's what I'm saying. Because if we do not have this, what can you focus on other than the reward, the financial reward? Anything else? Any other uh, reflection? Yes, brother. 
there are always two sides of a coin. There, in other words, there are other perspectives that we can look into. Uh, not, uh, money cannot be an answer. Then. If we have difficulty on money, there are other ways by which we can motivate our uh, people, our workers in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But in this case, if you have noticed the beginning, what they're saying in this research, if the kind of work is no longer rutinary, but rudimentary, basic, it's the money that they're looking for. Meaning, I think that's the kind of work that we are doing in our ministry. It's not rudimentary, it's not basic, it is something that is challenging. It is something that has a lot of uh, what meaning in it, so that it's not, that, that's what I'm saying, it's, so, it's no longer great that you are looking for, it's really the higher calling, which we call in the layman's term, it's the purpose. Okay, so that's one side. So I want you to show this, that uh, I think, I hope some of your uh, people in, the, in your particular time can see this, although it was based on a different setting, but it's true for all. So at least we have a scientific basis. Okay. So let's continue about the, the motivation side. So anyway, it's just in the paper. So we're talking really in terms of motivation, purpose, galina, economy. So basically when you talk of uh, that direction, intention, you do any motivation. So it's a process that I need we need to address as people managing uh, people in the organization. So in this case, I think um, I showed already the video, and then I showed you, this is another theory. No? So that's one theory, purpose, autonomy, and mastery. This is another theory that will motivate people at work. The, this particular theory said that when people find that actually it's organizational justice, no? so when they find that there's certain equity, <coughs> because normally, when you also work, you see that there is equity in terms of what? Either reward, treatment, when people do not feel that there is what? Principle of equality, your need, no? or there is equity. A feeling of what do you feel? There is some kind of a favoritism, we are not taken care of. What I'm simply saying, this theory talks about, you need to show that this distribution principle, equality, equity, needs are responded to. No? That's why you need to know that as the coordinator, as the director, you need to know that there are certain rules that you need, uh, again, rules in terms of are their voices heard? No? Is their bias free? Are they knowledgeable? Is there consistency by the way we implement things? No? Um, do we listen to everyone? Okay. Is there a way by which we can appeal? <laughs> Of final binding and executive right? and they appeal. Or you're talking about social rules, right? how we show respect and accountability. What uh, they're saying here are these are components that will affect this uh, distribution justice uh, perception of there is in, uh, injustice or there is favoritism in simple terms, no? or we are not treated well. And it has something to do also how they will perceive Procedural justice. What is this? Which is, uh, when you say procedural justice, perception, what is that? Just cause and due process. The right to be heard and the right to explain. That's very important. Well, it's not only legal. It's something that do we provide people when they have, uh, when we try to discipline them, do we listen to their suffering? Written and writing or verbally? But that's the requirement too. When you talk about procedural justice, the right to be heard. The other one is reason. Diba? Is there an acceptable reason why you are, let's say, penalizing people? Or you, why are you not uh, rewarding people? That's very important. So it affects, for example, I was talking about this. Maybe we're conscious about it. So it affects. If you can be angry about it, you can be stressful depending on what happens there. And I think even us as uh, director coordinators, you level of stress, no? you, you, the kind of anger that you uh, experience, of course, parang si ang Panginoon, no? sabi ng Panginoon, pwede ka na magalit, di ba si Jesus nagalit. Pero it's 
how you manage your anger. In fact, there is a seminar on anger management. I don't know if you also have seen that movie. Okay, that we do. Secret right now. So, di ba secret? Asi ano? What is his name? Jack Nicholson. Ah, yon na Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Di ba yung anger management? No. But how do we handle that? Because sometimes we're not able to handle that anger that we have. And it affects our subordinates, right? It affects our volunteer, it affects our co-priest in that case. Because we also manage them. Because if you're a priest, you can be possibly managing other priests too, right? So in that case, how do you handle How do you handle stress? Oh, like now, are you too stressed? <laughs> no. Okay. So, okay, I have a question now related to stress and find out. Okay. How many of you, masakit yung mga likod nyo ngayon? Yeah, mga likod. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, stress kayo. Yung mga, there are physical manifestations of stress, right? There are psychological, there are social, Maraming manifestation. Kaya ang tanong ko, kung yung staff nyo ang stress, how are we able to help them? Kasi for example, how many of you at this stage and may maintenance na? Diba? Yung hypertension. Because that's part of stress. How many of us, for example, uh, hindi kong maintenance, yung cholesterol din ba yung pang-stress, yung katakawan ng So, but, but what I'm saying is, yeah, that's part of stress, physical, or for example, part of physical is, for example, diba, pag stress, either hindi ka makakain, no? diba, na, yung, diba, it's coming from here, right? from the gut, diba? Yung parang naginigas, I don't know, in Visaya, what do you call that? But it's something, there's something here in the family, right? So, um, uh, no, 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 there are two effects of it, either, the other one is super deep. Uh, what do you call that? Yung isa kasi is NBM, yung isa naman ay constipation. Okay, meron akong joke. Give me three characters in the Bible, Old Testament, that were constipated. Three, three, oh, three characters in the Bible, Old Testament, who were constipated. Si ano? David, he sat on the throne too long. Di ba si David, he sat on the throne too long? Di ba pag kami constipated ka, tagal mo doon? Sino ba yung isa? Moses, he took two tablets. The other one is Samson. Samson, di ba? Anyway, tapos na yung joke. So, but that's part of the stress, no? So, because that's... Why am I talking about some of this? Of course, I think mga pare, mga madre. Ang dami nyo ng seminar on stress management. Ang dami. Just in case. But ang tanong ko, are we able to manage the stress of our people? That's what I'm talking about. Ikaw alam mo. Nag-seminar ka, ikaw alam mo. Sometimes na kahit alam mo, you're not able to manage your stress. Ang tanong ko, how do you manage and address the stress of your people? Because of the work, multitasking that you have, di ba? Poor working condition. Kaya yung box ng working condition, hindi nakapisa. Okay. That's what I'm talking about in terms of how you handle stress. The other one is what you call attitudes. Ito nga yung sabi ko na kung purpose ang motivation mo, hindi ka yung organizational commitment. But when people see that there is injustice, that organizational commitment is affected. How do you know that there is organizational commitment? Behaviorally. How do you know that your people are committed? Tanong ko kanina kaya na eh. So high school pa lang, katikista na siya. Hanggang ngayon, katikista pa rin siya. So it means, behaviorally, management side, ano yung way of showing commitment? Your loyalty to your organization. No? In terms of how long have you been there to take and teen, may si father, ilang bishop na, ilang ano, pero ikaw nandun ka pa rin. Diba? That's organization.
relational commitment. Di ba? Nakumpisa yung simbahan ng maliit na yung parang palasyo na nandung ka pa rin. No? That's organizational commitment. Loyalty. Kaya di ba, may award. Magbigay naman kayo ng award. Loyalty yes. award. Bigyan nyo ng isang napila at lagyan nyo ng pangalan niya. <laughs> That's what I'm loyalty. No? Commitment. Job satisfaction. When people are satisfied in the job, I mean, if they see that there is justice, satisfied sila. Kasi kung hindi, they satisfied. Mamiya, I'll show another slide on this. The other one is kaya nga yung anchor on the theory of behavior. No? So you see this, when people see justice, yung past performance nila is maganda. No? Organizational citizenship, what is this? Organizational citizenship meaning following rules. No? So you follow rules, you abide by what the, your organization, the ministry, believes in. Counterproductive work behaviors, ano na ito? Ito na yung mga counterproductive, dishonest, dadayain yung report, hindi magkakati. Kung magkakati guys, nung no, sabi ko, yun ay counterproductive. <laughs> counterproductive absences, no? Coming late, heavy merry reasons why you are not able to report. Yan na yung mga symptoms nyo that there is something wrong. No? Kung misal, iba yun eh. Pero sometimes, kung magaling ka may pattern eh. Diba? Ganun din sa mga, ganun din sa mga pare, ganun din sa mga madre. When you are hunting your people, you see patterns. Diba? So these are things, what this particular theory is simply saying, yung theory ng equity. If people perceive that there is no justice, there is no due process and justice, you ito will be affected. All of this will be affected. Which you need to address. No? That's what I'm simply saying. Be aware of this. Because you need to address it. Especially when you have a lot of people to uh, uh, supervise. No? Okay, so we go. There are no other reasons. Now we go to our human bingo. Okay, so, tingnan ko nga, process-wise. Was it difficult for you to, uh, was it easy or difficult for you to fill up the form? How many, may I hear somebody who found it easy to fill up the form, meaning, to ask people around and you filling up and deciding to, these are my five uh, motivators. May I hear a soul that found it easy, relatively easy, to fill up the form, the five, and asking other people to fill it up. Relatively easy. Uh, relatively easy. Uh, relatively, because yeah. relatively. Okay, see now. Ah, sige. Yes, please. Uh, I found it easy because uh, people are offering their papers to you. <laughs> What you what identifying your five? Yeah. You found it easy. I found it easy. Why? Because I know what I'm after. I mean, I don't. Na focus kasi ako. Ah, focus so you know what motivation. Okay. Any soul that found it relatively difficult to identify the five and to ask other people to sign your form. Anybody who found it relatively difficult. Difficult? Ah, yes. Difficult to identify my five characteristics because many of them are related and uh, and uh, I sense that there are some characteristics here and there that I possess but maybe not so striking. So I have to choose the five. So that's my difficulty. But in relation to asking the people around to sign, it's relatively easy because we are all open, I guess. Ah, so that make it easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Anybody else who found it uh, easy, uh, difficult, but oh, easy? Ah, any other sharing? Difficult. Support. Natatandaan nyo kaya yung laman ng po. What is that motivator that you can remember most? Meaning and purpose. Tingnan nga natin. Lahat made up yung meaning and purpose. Wow. Lahat mayroong meaning and purpose. Working condition. This is one of our what? Needing improvement. Yes. I want you to realize that, that it's not enough that we manage. It's not enough that we manage. It's not enough that we conducive working condition. It's not enough that we feel up. What's the other thing? Leadership. 
good superior educator yes, din appeal apa pero no pero no naman yung ano pa yung wala self acceptance pero no iba feeling of vitality yung... and mental akmatanda na ito ba daming wala ah. feeling of vitality and mental alertness so, sige babalik muna tayo doon ngayon merong ano to syempre para motivation so merong Uh, external reward. No? Mas kukonti yung inyong hindi na fill up, meaning mas kukonti yung butas nyo, meaning hindi may price. Okay, so number one, Joey. Okay. Okay. Joey. 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 Thank you. 
So this is the framework that she developed. So that if you will look at it, na kasi na yung nandito na yung nandyan siya. So I want you to look at your big book. I want you to look at it because the items that you see there are actually based on this particular framework. Our hypothesis in this particular dissertation is when people are satisfied, their dispositional affect is, in, is addressed, they have vigorous work engagement, and they have a flourishing organization, they will find happiness at work. Meaning when you manage your people, motivation, it's not enough, kailangan masaya ang tao, no? Because pwedeng walang bayad, pwedeng maliit ang bayad, I won't mind that you eat your fries, okay? Ingitin niyo yung mga kalas. Saan niyo naman? Isip niyo naman sa mga kalas. Hindi yung mga sarili, kung yung owner yan. Owner yan. Share niya, Pedro. Share niya. Share. 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 Ay, i-share niya ang mga madre, pare, i-share. Ay, Thank you. Sure. Oh, I think you were not able to eat a good lunch. They didn't want the food. They want the junk food. Okay. I requested sila natin to provide the reward, the prize for my session. So it's not for me. It's actually for catechetical industry. Okay, so let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, so what I'm simply saying, ito, napaka-simple, we found out that hindi, kasi we are going to do it for the seamen, not the sea table. And then we found out it's a different type of work then hindi pala, pera ang kanilang, ganun din eh, it's not money, but these are the things that will make them happy in their work, meaning, these are their motivators. So, our dependent variable, from a research perspective, is happiness in the work. Okay? Pagka natapos na yun, ito yung, hindi pa pwede yung, ano, yung instrument kasi we have not dependent uh, paper yet. So, at least I'm providing you what we develop so most of the things, actually, if you have it, you can mark it now. So you can see, for example, that many of the items you, that you have there are really here. Tingnan niyo yung nandiyan sa inyo. Meaning and purpose, story shape, di ba? Support and rewarding, meron din kayo nga. Engage and interested. So you can see that many of these are really on. Uh, actually, these are the authors. When you receive your handout, you can access it the journal if you want to, because I indicated, no? if you want to be more scholarly about it. Or maybe some of you would like to pursue your own graduate study. So this is an interesting, actually this is an interesting area for the catechetical ministry. No? Aside from that, what makes your people happy at work? No? So that's part of motivation. Diba? Maliban sa matakawan tayo ng lugar sa langit, hindi na siya na what makes you happy. Diba that is something that is given? That the Lord will be my reward. I will be in heaven. Pero diba we talk about the here and now? It's important that we talk about the here and now. Because if we talk about the higher level, hindi masustain, diba? Mahirap. And so, while we are talking about that as a higher purpose, I think it's important that we look at ano ba yung happiness? Very simple, well-being, yung positive experiences. 
says, no. So you know, but we'll be affected by all of those. See, so that's the bingo game. The contents of your bingo game are actually those that are there, basically. That will make people happy in the organization. So my point is, as administrators, coordinators, ensure that people are happy in, in the workplace, in, your, in the kind of work that they are doing. Diba? Pag masaya ka, diba? Ma ibang context to eh. Yung kasayahan, yung maging masaya ka sa ginagawa mo. Karin pagod, masaya ka yung at the end of the day, Lord, thank you. Diba? You're so grateful. Pero misan, yung ano, yung nasa gitna, misan mahirap yung vitality. Diba? Misan, wala na talaga eh. Diba? Misan, it's really physically, for some of us who are aging, hindi talaga eh. Kasi misan, that alertness, that physical vitality, wala doon. Pero yung spirit is still willing. Diba? Pero we also need to be, I think, for many of you are young, and only a few are really uh, aging. It's a reality. Ang problem kasi natin, I think, in the church, kumukonti ang vocation, di ba? Kumukonti ang vocation, kumukonti kaya yung multi multitasking is so real because wala nang tao eh, wala nang workers in the vineyard. For example, there is a university, yun na lang ang brothers and practically they are the lay people teaching the school. Okay? Although it's the name of the Nasa University, pag talagang sino ang nasa operations and taking it's the lady, it's the lady boy. It's no longer the brothers. But the charter talks about that the president of the university is a doctorate degree holder, the son brother. That's the requirement. So that post has to be filled up by that particular legal requirement. But when you talk about people below, you have lay. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about. Ganon din eh. Because nga yung workers go and physically, you know, people with living, retiring, uh, physically not able. And I think we need to talk about that. And uh, assigning also sisters or priests who are aging. Kami tan, wala, wala, iba na rin eh, di ba? Iba yung vitality, iba yung ano. Gusto mo, pero siyempre, once there is a change in the culture, change in reality, iba nga, sabi niya doon sa isang ano, science of the, nag-iiba eh. So we need to adapt. We cannot be, what we are many, many years ago, no? We need to. So, yun lang. So, what I'm simply saying, alam niyo ngayon ang mga millennial, yan naman din ang pinakatikays natin, naghanap na ano eh, no? Oo, kasi hindi naman material na bagay eh. Kundi you're talking of happiness in the workplace. So, this is one of the things that I want to uh, uh, emphasize to you as administrators, no? ensuring that our people, colleagues, will be happy at work. Making sense? Yes. Yes. Oh. I know that Dr. Uh, si Ed no, Domingo talked about yeah. leadership. Kaya lang, I just want to complete it. I'm not sure if we will duplicate. But I want to talk about that part of what makes people management. I think that I'm for distinguished. I think, you know, he's a leader. But uh, from a management <coughs> no, management perspective, naman yung marinig, no? what makes uh, what will make your organization really also efficient, achieve vision and mission, yung mga ganun from a perspective of uh, management. Uh, anyway, yeah, influence, hindi ko na yun, hindi natin kung doon definition lang yan. Okay, so that is one framework about managing people in the organization. So, Dick and Hubert, Dick uh, actually is a protestant, I think he's a pastor from uh, University of Manitoba. No? So they developed this book. He came to La Salle uh, last year. But he was saying, maybe it's about time that we look at a different perspective of what is uh, a leader no? that we can emulate. Something that will make our organization alive, <coughs> flourish, people will be happy. Yun ang ano ko. That's why I'm coming from that framework. No? So, what kind of leader that is? Sabi niya, maybe it's about time. Kasi kung usapan natin, uh, participative. Di ba yan yung mga traditional party? Participative. <coughs> Pag yan ang ginagamit yung term, yung edad niya makakayapa. So, <laughs> so, you want to be more recent. No? So, these are yung multi-stream. Kasi yung mga... Mainstream yan na yung mga old uh, 
definition classical. No? So, it is modern. so they said that, are you an engaging type of leader? Are you able to engage your people at work? Or are you an empowering type of leader? Yeah. Do you empower them? Are you able to enable them? Kasi yung empowerment is a feeling, it's more of the, okay, the pushing, the enabling is what the mentoring component, and enabling. When you enable, you provide the technical, yung empowering is the moral, it's the affect, no? it's the affect, cognitive yung enabling. And then, or you are more the equipping kasi dito, iba yung ano niya, equipping in a sense that, yung all around na, yung iba-iba pang kailangan, you're able to do. Kasi, pag leader ka, syempre, you need to, sabi mo ka, wala kang competence yung ibang katekista, but they're willing to volunteer. Di ba? So, it's necessary that you're able to, yung leadership style na to, I don't, it's just one school of thought that I want to present to you. That is something new from a management perspective, no? not in the religious term. Para lang, pag nakita nyo, ah, yes, I have seen that, so it's something that makes sense that I can use. Kasi minsan, we do not want to use the management term. Parang hindi. You can use it in, in the church.